From having to use camouflage as their defense to having flight as an excellent defensive ability, these insects remain impeccably unique in their structures. But however, we would be ranking these insects with their unique abilities and structures. This is the ultimate insect ranking. Who do you believe will top the list? Get your fingers crossed as we start ranking them. But wait, will your favorite insect be at the top? Keep watching this video till the end to find out. Insects are a powerful and diverse faction with unique abilities, including flight, exoskeletal armor, compound eyes, and high stealth, making them strong in combat and able to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets. Insects possess a unique combination of overpowered abilities that make them one of the most successful and broken factions in the game. Insects have such unique and standout members that many of them could easily have their own tier list, emphasizing the fascinating and diverse nature of these creatures. Now, before we get into the ranking of these insects, please just take a moment to subscribe to our channel so we too can be ranked at the top of the list in the YouTube world. If you just did that, we appreciate your effort. And now let's go rank these insects. Tier D, Zygentoma. At the bottom of the tier list, we have Zygentoma, which consists of the silverfish. The silverfish is the most primitive insect. They appear at the bottom of the list because they only have an exoskeleton, which is the only characteristic of an insect they have. They do not have wings and have essentially no combat abilities, and their defenses are fairly low, which is why we will place them in the D tier. Tier C, Phasmatoda. Now the first we have in the C tier are the Phasmids, which include walking sticks and leaf mimics. These insects have unquestionably some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire game, second only to color-changing builds like the octopus and chameleon. See, as impressive as these are, their camouflage can only take them so far while they're near undetectable. While remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food, and while they do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment where camouflage doesn't match, the phasmids have a similar game plan to sloths, but at least phasmines don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. Tier B, the Lepidoptera. Moving up the tier list in the B tier, we have the Lepidopterans, which include moths, butterflies, and skippers. At first glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds, but they're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat. With extremely squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities, many of the larval forms of these builds are 100 defenseless and have mobility stats in the single digits, literally the freest kills in the game. However, the Leopard player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. These strategies often don't hold up against high intelligence builds, but they do help. Nevertheless, some insects are a massively successful faction, and for that reason, they are going to be concentrated in the higher tier. Tier A, the Blatidia, Dermaptera, and Orthoptera. At the bottom of the A tier, here we have the Cockroach. The Cockroach is the ultimate survivor, which opted to spec into mobility, stealth, and a multitude of elemental resistances in lieu of any offensive abilities. While they don't pack much heat, their flat shape allows them to easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely difficult for other players to attack in their rather clumsy flyers. But however, they do have an above average ground movement speed, enabling them to quickly scurry to cover if they see a predatory player approaching. Another insect we have in the A tier is the Earwig. This is a fearsome looking generalist build that appears to have a giant pair of mandibles on its rear end called Circe. As a matter of fact, as fearsome as these Circe forceps are, if we actually check the Earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. Now at the top of the A tier, we've got the Orthopterans, including Grasshoppers, Crickets, and Katydids. These are the first mobility-centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. Flight is an excellent defensive ability as it allows the user to get out of reach of an attack's range. Additionally, their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within. And striking range without alerting them and because their jump has such excellent frame data landing an ambush strike on an orthopteran can feel near impossible at times and even if a player does manage to secure a grab, 
Their power behind legs can function as quite an effective combo break. Hence, they deserve to be at the top of the A tier. With that said, we think there are a few flaws in their strategy, which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. Yeah. Tier S. The Hemiptera, Neuroptera, Mantidea, and Hymenoptera. And so, moving to the S tier, at the bottom of this list, we have the Hemiptans. These includes true bugs. A diverse order of insects with a few things in common, including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield-shaped. However, the most notable thing is that rather than slicing or pinching mouthparts, the Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. However, there are some Hemiptera that use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Their venom is powerful enough to warn off just about any other insect and can even deal severe damage to larger insects. And going through the S tier, the next we have there after the Hemiptera is the Neuroptera, and these include the Lacewinds and Ant Lions. A rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic-looking base stats is genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. However, looking at the final form of this build paints a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast majority of their time in, is a brutally effective predator build for any predator who prefers camping. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Ant lions have a devastating venomous bite which they use to one-shot unsuspecting players before draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, their passive stealth rating is extremely high, making their ambush style unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough once the prey gets caught in their trap, the ant lion even has the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target, making escape a near impossibility. The Neuroptera, however, have a weak adult form. Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form and really only exist to be a vessel that allows predators to find each other and complete the mating quest line. Another insect that finds its way onto the S tier list is the mantis. Mantis have a fairly straightforward playstyle consisting of slashing and grabbing their targets, using powerful spiked raptorial forelimbs. If we take a look at the Mantis stats, we see that the Mantis has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat similar to that of a walking stick, which it desperately needs in order to be able to get within striking range of its targets. It's clumsy. Flight and slow ground movement speed make chasing prey basically impossible. However, the Mantis's strike is lightning quick to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly evasive. As powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't immobilize the target and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. And while the Mantis's large size enables it to tank most counterattacks, attacking a venomous target is kind of a serious blunder for a Mantis. Now at the top of the S tier, the highest rank of all, we have the Hymenoptera, and these include the ants, bees, and wasps. These insects are a bit more well-rounded, having decent armor all over, and tending to have both forward and rear-facing weaponry with most time in operons, packing strong jaws and a venomous stinger. The wasp's signature buzz and yellow banding are so iconic that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain an advantage on their own intimidation checks. These social hymenopterans can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. They can capture prisoners, cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of insects will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Ants in particular are masters of both empire building and military tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in their own territory. So while beetles may take up a larger percentage of total insect variants termites and ants, both vastly outnumber any other insect build. As a matter of fact, the only genuine threats to these social players is that they tend to be invaders, disguising themselves as members of their own colony but are really there to disrupt steal and attack. 
Many spiders, hymenoptera, and mantises mainly adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. Did you get to see your favorite insect at the top? Or did it come at the bottom of the list? Let us know where your favorite insect came at in the comment section below. See, if you were given the power to bring back one animal, which would it be? Go check out this video. Animals that you wish weren't extinct. What are you waiting for? Go watch it now.